sorry, uh, the, uh, the Obama effect, uh, as, as it has been, I think it does need to be mentioned in this context as well, because uh, not only is, is, uh, is it are more and more uh, federal U.S. websites being, uh, having a uh, Creative Commons bug on them, um, but, uh, and all the, the information being listed as Creative Commons, which is, as, you know, which is great, uh, but also uh, they're, they're starting to use uh, both Drupal and movable type. They're using Drupal for recovery.gov, and I'm not sure where they're using movable type, but, but there's a, an, an acceptance for open source and trying different open source platforms for, for their web use uh, and web strategies uh, within uh, Obama's administration. Mm. So that's very. You got a new young, what, 34 year old uh, CTO down there, right? Uh, right. Guys in Washington? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I would uh, I would like to explore that a little deeper, um, building on what Don was talking about in terms of uh, government involvement in open source uh, communities and foundations. Uh, so you talked about Drupal. Uh, yeah. I, d I just wanted to add one thing. It was spurred by Dave's comment about incumbency, and I think it's it's really important, which is the structure of an enterprise license agreement. So uh, government's not alone in this. Co commercial corporations do this, but the, the way this works, for those who haven't been through this pleasure, is you know, big monopoly software providers says you know the way to get a real good deal for us is to sign up for you know forty million dollars and everyone can use whatever it is Oracle, Microsoft, right? And there's no incremental charge. You just carry on using it, right? It's free. It's free, right? So to to the to the incremental project, right? Project manager wants a new license for a database or something, looks free to them, right? At the end of three, during the three year period, it's very hard for any uh, young, challenging company to come in because they're trying to compete with free, right? And they're going to go out of business if they compete with free on a commercial model. Then you get to the end of three years and the friendly software company comes in and says, well, let me count heads here, all right? Oh, it's not $40 million, you've got $80 million worth of software out there. Okay, well, we'll do a deal. For you, 60, right? So, but the, the, there's two effects of that. One is it makes the incremental decision look free, and it gives enormous leverage to the, uh, you know, big oligopolist, if you like, company, and it, and it takes the, you know, chokes the oxygen out of people who are trying to get the incremental project going through. So this is uh, quite a challenge in, in, in quite a lot of areas of software, and it's particularly the case where you've got well-established categories. If it's a totally new category, it's not so much of an issue, right? And I think content management had that advantage for a while, you know, it was a new category. Mm -hmm. But now you're seeing Microsoft SharePoint coming in, and it's like, you know, what is it, 75 million? What are they up to these days in Canada? It's, it's, it's these big, big ELAs, and that is a structural barrier, not just to open source, but to any small company getting in.